Hi and welcome back. Um, before we get into pulling our uh, Volvo stern drive off, uh, we just want to remind you to uh, subscribe to our videos and uh, to our channel and to um, check out CanadaWideMarine.com for uh, everything you need for your boat. Uh, today we're going to uh, pull a uh, Volvo Penta SXA stern drive off. Um, this is part of our annual service. We do this every year to uh, inspect the bellows. Uh, we want to make sure that the bellows uh, aren't cracked and leaking. We inspect uh, the universal joints. We check the gimbal bearing which is up in there and that supports the drive shaft. Um, we also inspect the, uh, the drive coupler and, uh, and grease the drive shaft splines while we're in there. So, uh, pretty simple job. You can do it at home. Um, they're very heavy and awkward. I use a, a crane, um, an engine crane adapter that I've used, uh, that I've set up to, uh, to take the weight of it. Uh, if you're doing it at home, you can, uh, let me just tilt this down a bit. You could, you can shim uh, underneath your uh, your skeg there with some uh, some two by fours, some plywood, uh, to take the weight, and then you can just slide it off, balancing it on the skeg there. Um, a second person is really handy for that as well. Um, but let's just jump right into this, get her done. Um, first thing we need to do is. Uh, there's a plastic cover here. It's held on with uh, five bolts, two this side, two there, and uh, one on the bottom. So we'll just pop them out of there. This gives us access to the, uh, the shift mechanism that we need to disconnect. So this cover just pops right off of there. It's plastic, it's lightweight. And then this is our shift cable here. Uh, it comes through to our shift linkage. These ones are pretty simple to get out of there. There's lots of room. If you're working on a DP um, or an early model Volvo, uh, the same principle applies. There's a cover on the back rather than a wrap around, uh, and the shift cable comes through. Uh, so you need to disconnect the cable. The, uh, the linkage bit has a, a little pivot on there. Uh, that all has to come off so that we can slide the, uh, the stern drive over the cable. So we'll just loosen that off, take the, uh, loosen the jam nut. I'm gonna take the pivot and the jam nut off of the cable. I like to inspect the, uh, there's a, we'll just, there's a seal on, on your shift cable here. I like to make sure that it's in good condition. Uh, quite often they're missing. Um, this is a lake boat, so it's not as big a deal, but if this was a saltwater boat, this helps keep the salt water from traveling up your cable and uh, getting it all gummy and corroded. So now with our cable disconnected there, um, we need to disconnect our trim rams. Let's just zoom back out again. There we go. These rams, this is great because I service this motor every year. Um, if you don't lubricate these pins regularly, uh, they can be really difficult to get out, but uh, these ones are nice and free and there's just a uh, there's a cotter pin that slides through a hole in the end there when you're putting these cotter pins in um, don't bend them over too much just enough so that they don't come out again is all you need to do uh, then they're easier to take out next time and we'll put this on top. 
This is our dipstick for the oil level that I'm taking out here. Just turn that up a little bit. And I have a, uh, a lifting ring that I fabricated up uh, that screws into the, uh, into the hole. Check my gear lube level while I'm in there. This is uh, springtime. Uh, we're April right now. So in the fall, I changed the gear lube when I winterized this boat to, before we put it away. Um, make sure that there's no water in the gear lube. Don't want it sitting in there all winter. So uh, I know his gear lube's good now. If you just do a once a year service, uh, you would want to be changing your gear lube right now as well. But Take a little bit of weight and then these just slide out. Again, these pins, uh, we'll go over it when I put it all back together, but uh, because I've greased them, they just slide out. The first time I serviced this boat, several five years ago or whatever, uh, they hadn't been out in a long time and that was tough, took a lot of heat. Uh, so now that we've got our trim rams disconnected, we can trim up and down. The shift lever is disconnected. All we need to do are take these uh, six bolts out, three down this side, three down the other side, and the stern drive will slide right off. Okay, six bolts out. Uh, I used a, a universal joint socket. Um, you can just use a wrench, um, whichever you have handy. Uh, those six nuts off, the drive just slides right out of there. And be careful to grab your drive shaft as it's coming out. It doesn't drop down and do any damage. Uh, let's have a look in here. So first thing we're looking at, bring the camera over a little closer. Universal joints. You want to have them nice and loose, wiggle them back and forth. You don't want to feel any notchiness. Um, if you can see signs of rust poking out um, from the bearing surfaces in here, there's probably a problem. There, but these are nice and uh, floppy and loose, but there's no excess clearance. They don't rattle back and forth or anything. So universal joints are good. Drive shaft splines are nicely greased. Um, so no damage. Again, we do this every season. These splines need to be greased every year. Um, otherwise you'll eat up your coupler and your drive shaft um, pretty quick. So, uh, so this ends looking good. Now just slide that out of the way and we'll go mobile with the camera here and I'm seeing some liquid down in the uh, in the bellows it might just be a little bit of grease oil so what can we see oh yeah you can see that in there so let's just have whoops I'll put the flashlight on there and see how that works there we go we can see let's see what we got there so that's just a, that's a little bit of oil. Uh, I'm not sure where, uh, and I'm guessing that that would have come from the, uh, the gimbal bearing, which is right up in there. Um, I'll just uh, clean my hand here. The other place uh, oil can come from is uh, the seal. Oops. I'm holding the camera here too. So there is a, a seal on the bottom of the, uh, where are we? Right there. Underneath that U-joint where the drive shaft goes in, 
and there's a seal in there. There's a bit of green paint there, but I'm not seeing any signs of uh, oil. I'm going to put the camera down and just check that. Okay, back to, uh, we've got a little bit of oil down in there. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to monitor that. It's not super bad. It's not being flung all over. Um, there, it may have come from the grease in the gimbal bearing. Um, or it may have come from, and I suspect it's more likely the input shaft seal on the, uh, on the stern drive. So we're going to monitor that and uh, see how it goes. Now to check your gimbal bearing, the good news is there's no water in there. Uh, so the, uh, the bellows themselves are not leaking. And to check your gimbal bearing, uh, you reach in and you turn that inner part of your bearing and it wants to turn nice and smooth. If you've got any uh, notchiness or grumbles or growls in there, if it feels all rumbly when you're turning it, uh, that's no good. But this one's all nice and good, uh, so we're all pretty happy there, other than a little bit of oil. Okay, and we're back. Um, we've put a new seal in the front of, that, uh, of our drive. Uh, now we're going to put it all back together. We know that our bellows are not leaking. Uh, we know that the gimbal bearing is good. Uh, the other thing that we want to have a quick look at is, uh, let's see if I can just tilt this down. No, that's not going to work. We'll just take that camera right off. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the seal for your water intake around here. So that's where the water comes in from the pickup at the bottom of the stern drive um, through here and to the water pump on the front of the motor. Uh, and this is your exhaust outlet. So you want to make sure in particular that this seal through here is good. Otherwise you'll get exhaust gases coming up into your uh, air intake, uh, water intake. That'll cause a high speed overheat. Uh, and if this, any of this is leaking, uh, this seal here is no good. You'll uh, also get a, a high speed overheat because it'll suck air in there. When you're up on plane, this is all out of the water and uh, the, the water pump will start sucking air and you'll get air bubbles through your cooling system. So this is a good place to check. Uh, if it's a saltwater boat, you want to have a bit of a look in, uh, in your pickup. Make sure you don't have any mussels and barnacles and stuff like that. This is a lake boat, so it's, uh, it's relatively clean. So. Um, seals are good. Uh, we're going to put some grease on our studs and uh, grease the drive shaft splines and uh, we'll put this back together. Okay, we're using um, Quicksilver Extreme Grease. Uh, this is a high pressure lubricant. Uh, it's excellent for, uh, for all of these applications. Um, grease all of your studs especially if it's a saltwater boat, but uh, these are stainless steel. If you don't grease them, the nuts will gall on there and seize up and cause all sorts of trouble. So they need grease on them. I also grease the threads on the, uh, on the end of the cable there. And of absolute importance, Need to grease your drive shaft splines. I'm making sure there's grease on all the splines all the way around. And I'm keeping the grease off of the end so that we don't uh, fill the coupler up with grease and end up with a hydraulic lock when we're pushing the drive in there. Uh, there's a couple of uh, O-rings on the drive shaft here that support the drive shaft in the gimbal bearing. I always give them a little bit of a, a wipe with some grease to just help them slide in there. And then we just 
just slide it on in. Guide the drive shaft into your gimbal bearing. Oops. Don't forget to lift your uh, trim rams above the cav plate because you can't do it later. Guide your drive shaft into the gimbal bearing. Make sure your shift cable goes through the, uh, the hole for the cable there. So at this point here, we're not quite on the splines yet and the splines aren't lined up with the coupler in there. So I've got this, uh, the stern drive in gear. Can you move the, the shift linkage there to put it into gear? You put your propeller on and you give it a bit of a turn and that will turn your drive shaft and line up your splines so it all just slides right in there. Six nuts and washers onto your greased studs. Okay, now with those six bolts tight, um, there's probably a torque spec for them, 45, 55, 60 foot-pounds. They're 7 16 fine thread, um, just good and tight. Uh, they're a nylock nut, um, so with those tight, uh, we want to uh, get our trim rams back into position. Uh, so we're going to use these pins, obviously. They've got a flat on them. Um, that lines up with the uh, the cotter pin hole, and let's get some new cotter pins. You could reuse the old cotter pins if you wanted to, but uh, it really is not worth the extra effort for us to fight with the bent over cotter pins. And very important uh, to grease your pins if you want to get them out again next year. So just lifting, I'm just lifting it with my knee here a little bit to just line up the, uh, the, ho the holes there. And then I'm looking through the top here to line up my uh, cotter pin hole. And while I'm still supporting it, if I take the weight off, the weight pushing on this will push the other ram out. So um, I keep it supported while I'm doing the two of them. cotter pin in and like I said at the beginning don't bend your cotter pins too bad uh, you don't have to bend them all the way over you just want to bend them enough so they don't come out I'll show you what we got here uh, there you go you can see how much I bent that cotter pin there not very much just, just enough so it doesn't come out. Now, all that's left is our shift linkage. There we go. Put our uh, jam nut on there first. And then we'll have a look at the, uh, the bit that I recorded just before on, uh, on your cable movement here. So I filmed this before I put the drive back on just to show you uh, for the adjustment of installing the, uh, the cable linkage here. I'm going to hold this cardboard up behind so that you can see a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to zoom in on it. There. When we're uh, adjusting and putting our, where is my little fitting here? This is our, uh, 
our linkage end that we're going to screw on there, we need to adjust it correctly for the, uh, for the shift to work properly. So with the shifter in neutral up forward uh, and the, uh, the stern drive in neutral, uh, we need to pull the cable, all the inner cable all the way out and push it all the way in. And you can see that there's movement there. There's some free travel in that. All cables have this. So the way to check that, I'm gonna put a little mark so that you can see. When we push the cable all the way in, whoops, don't pull the seal off. Push the cable all the way in and I'll mark it. And we'll pull it out and mark it. And you can see that there's, uh, ooh, that's uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch, maybe a little bit more of movement. So when we put it together, we want it to be right in the middle of that movement. So we want to slide that back to about there. And then this pin will slide into the shift linkage with the linkage in the middle of its movement. I just wanted to zoom in on this before I put the drive on it um, to show you that movement in the cable there. And we want to set it up so that we're halfway in between. Probably can't see the uh, the marks on this where the camera is set right now. Put the can put that in the middle, and then this is our uh, pivot pin. And I got grease on these threads uh, again so that I can get them out next year. And then with the shift linkage in neutral, there's even a little bit of movement there. But what we want to do is make sure that with our cable in its middle, uh, in the middle of its free travel, so from that's all the way out, that's all the way in, and that right there where I put the mark is the middle. You want it to just slide right into that hole on your shift linkage there. That tells me that the adjustment is correct. Again. That's with the transmission in neutral, or the stern drive in neutral, and the shift control in neutral up forward. Put a uh, flat washer on there, and a small little cotter pin on that. These ones I bend all the way over so that they've got a little bit more load bearing area. And that's that for that. Check the uh, cotter pin up on the, the top of your linkage here. Make sure everything else is happy there. Um, and I need to Lock up my jam nut there. And there we go. Just put my cover back on and uh, this stern drive's all good. We've uh, checked our, uh, we've checked our bellows. We've checked our universal joints. We replaced a leaky seal that we've discovered uh, before it became a problem. Um, and we greased our drive shaft splines. If you're uh, a once a year service guy, um, change your gear lube. We changed our gear lube in the fall in this. Uh, so uh, we know that it's good. Um, on a Volvo stern drive, you have this flat area on the dipstick. Uh, you want your gear lube anywhere in that flat area. I prefer to see them around about halfway up. If you overfill them uh, on a Volvo, it will float the, uh, the top clutch cone um, and uh, cause uh, problems with uh, engaging and slipping uh, in gear. Uh, and of course, if you don't have enough oil on there, uh, you're not gonna lubricate the top bearing uh, and gear properly, so. Um, screw that in, screw it back out, and uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, I'm about five-eighths of the way up the, uh, the flat on that uh, 
dipstick there. So more than happy with the level of that oil. Screw that in. And there you go.